you will know yeah. Troubled heart you'll know Every life has reason For I made it so Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, my illustrious, wonderful family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Mental House with me, your host, Khadija. Okay, you guys. Um, whatever side of the diaspora that you may be on, let me welcome you. The first thing I want to say, and I would be remiss if I didn't say it, um, if I didn't acknowledge the few emails that I received, and a lot of you, a few of you, and I wouldn't say a lot, I would say a few um, people let me know how um, they are very disturbed by the climate um, of today and what's going on in society. And that when I read things like the Ida B. Wells letters on uh, things of that nature, it does not do anything to forward the culture that what it does is it prohibits individuals from uh, moving forward. And so They asked me, can I be a little bit more um, aware of, you know, that type of energy. And I, I just want to say this. First and foremost, I am. I'm totally aware of the energy that the truth brings. The truth is hard. It's a hard pill to swallow. And what happens is when you become accurate and when you really become a lover of truth then sometimes you have to accept it you must accept it and you must swallow it even if it means to your own hurt to your own detriment to your own uh, uncomfortable feeling and I think that I will be doing you and I will be doing myself a disservice is that if I fail to look at the resemblance of yesterday and today and not put them together and not to be able to express what a pain body feels like when you've been terrorized um, for your whole existence. You know, in my opinion, I don't think black people have a problem with white America at all. They, white America has a problem with black America. So I don't need to apologize for anything. I'm unapologetic, first of all. But I don't feel I need to apologize for anything. Because we don't have a history of killing you and swinging you from trees. And the fact that I express that and the pain of that. Um, that's not just in my today, that is in my yesterday and the, the hundreds of years before, that it creates an environment within the person that if they're honest, then it's a pain that just can't be expressed. Now, what happens is, you know, you take that pain and use it for an excuse to lay down. You take it for motivation. You understand what your lot is. You understand that in spite of that, you must move forward. Listen, I have a sister that was murdered. I have a brother that was murdered by the police. And I sit up here and I talk about the brutality of the police. I talk about the murder of police on unarmed citizens because I also have a brother who was a lieutenant in the police department. I also have an uncle who's a fire battalion, chief battalion. I also have an uncle who was um, a sergeant for a while. So 
uh, there's a mixed bag of nuts here. And when I express those sentiments that I have about making a coalition or a connection between yesterday and today, or if I make a connection between the slave catcher and the police department, I'm only talking about how things look from my perspective. Just like if you were to talk about your experiences with, um, you know, your parents or whoever the uh, master narcissist is in your life, you wouldn't want someone to dismiss it because you're uncomfortable with it because they're uncomfortable with what you're saying. But if that is what happens, then so be it. Because you know what you're speaking is, is the truth. You know that you've been abused and you defy anyone to try to change your reality on that situation. So I just wanted to say, no, I won't stop reading Ida B. Wells' letters because I love Ida B. Wells. And I think that she was a very courageous woman. In fact, I think that um, a lot of y'all will do yourself good to understand how we got here and stop reading the narrative. You, you know what? Donald Trump is not the worst president that we've had in history. He's, he's a complete laughingstock, yes. But all of them were liars. Because if they weren't, then the narrative that you all, everybody believes, wouldn't see the light of day. If they were honest, good human beings. The people who want to control people control the narrative and they control how you think. And those of us who want to think outside the box, you know, we're always going to be, you know, chastised or just made to uh, feel like we need somebody to validate us. But I don't feel that. I do. In fact, I take the page from Brother Ray Hagan, who says, see this circle? Inside this circle, as Brother Ray Hagan says, represents all that I know. My knowledge. My knowledge base. The circumference of this circle is my knowledge base. Now, everybody must admit that there's an awful lot of space outside this circle. That is the knowledge that I'm not privy to. And I have to be open enough, willing to swallow a truth postulate enough to want to heal. Because until I can see outside my circumference of what reality is, now, nah, I may have a limited perception of the way other people live and the way other people think and pretty much how they see the world. So, it is possible that two people can, can, can be looking at the exact same thing. The exact same thing. Yet they'll see it extremely different. And so it becomes obvious that they're both operating off of a different stimulus. It becomes obvious. It becomes apparent. And unless they can understand them, can't move forward. So with that being said, thank you for your comments. I appreciate them. Negative and positive. Be blessed. And I will see you in the next video right here in the mental house. Bye-bye.